Uh, joining us right now is the Republican senator from Arkansas, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq veteran, uh, Tom Cotton. Senator, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, first, very quick question, uh, yes or no, should Senator Ted Cruz, in your view, offer a full-throated endorsement of Donald Trump this evening? Well, Jake, that's up to Ted tonight. Uh, I assume Ted and Donald have been talking about this. I, I hope coming out of this convention, um, all of Donald's former adversaries in the primary can be behind the Republican ticket. And I hope Donald can act in a magnanimous way towards all of the folks that he defeated. That's the way we have to work to unify the party and then to move forward and appeal to not just Republicans, but the independents and moderates, the Democrats that we need to win the election. Is it enough, do you think, if Ted Cruz comes out and says nice things about the Republican Party, nasty things about Hillary Clinton, uh, suggests that he will vote for Donald Trump, but doesn't actually like firmly, fully get behind him? Uh, I'll let Ted speak for himself tonight. You're such a diplomat. Uh, let me ask you, in your speech Monday night, it has been pointed out by observers that you only mentioned Donald Trump once, and you said it this way, in a Trump-Pence administration and with a Republican Congress, help is on the way, an echo of uh, Vice President Cheney, I believe, promising the military help would be on the way. Um, obviously, you support Donald Trump. Am I incorrect in saying you don't seem really hugely enthusiastic about it? Well, uh, on Monday, they'd asked me to speak a little bit about my service, and I want to talk about my family's history of service because we're representative of a lot of families, and our troops and their families have been ill-served under the Obama administration, just like they were the last time that Clinton was in the White House. And I've spoken with Donald Trump about this. He understands the dramatic budget cuts our military has faced, and I do believe that in the Trump-Pence administration with the Republican Congress, we would see a significant increase in defense spending, hopefully in the first 100, year, 100 days next year. We wouldn't see that with Hillary Clinton, I'm confident. Okay. I didn't hear you push back on my analysis, so I will move on. Um, I do want to play for you something. This is some sound that we recently got. It was, it was flagged by uh, Andrew Kaczynski of BuzzFeed. This is Al Baldassaro. He is a Trump campaign advisor, New Hampshire state representative, also a delegate from New Hampshire. Uh, this is him on the Jeff Kuhner show. If we could roll that sound. She is a disgrace for any li the lies that she told those mothers about their children that got killed over there in Benghazi. She dropped the ball on over 400 emails requesting backup security. Something's wrong there. I wish they let the uh, made the documents public on why uh, Anderson was the ambassador Anderson. You know, because in my mind, I want to think that were they moving guns, were they doing something there? Why did they, how did they know he was even there? This whole thing disgusts me. Hillary Clinton should be put in the fire line and shot for treason. Obviously, he was referring to Ambassador uh, Chris Stevens. Um, put in the firing line and shot for treason? No, that... <laughs> That's not in keeping with the best traditions of American politics. We have opponents, we have ad adversaries, we don't have enemies in American politics, though. So I can't agree with that kind of rhetoric. Now, I will say that there are genuine and serious uh, concerns about what Hillary Clinton did before the Benghazi attacks, during them, and after them. I think her uh, extremely careless uh, handling of classified information, to use FBI Director Jim Comey's term, disqualifies her from being president. But I think the way to handle that is to let the American people make the choice and render their verdict this November. Do you condemn that rhetoric? That, that kind of rhetoric has no place in our politics. Um, many prominent members of your party, uh, Mitt Romney, John McCain, George Bush, other George Bush, I could go on, I won't, are not here. Um, do you worry at all that that represents something beyond just the elites are not here, but it represents something about Republicans who might have concerns about your nominee? Well, th there clearly are some Republicans, uh, as we started out talking earlier about Ted Cruz, who still have some misgivings about Donald Trump. I hope that they hear this week and can hear from Donald Trump and his campaign personally enough to satisfy them that Donald Trump will be a better president than Hillary Clinton, because that's the choice we face. I also hope that Donald Trump and his campaign can deal with them in a magnanimous fashion since he won the primary. And now he needs their support to win this fall. And in the end, when you're the candidate, it's your responsibility to bring people behind you. It's not their responsibility to get behind you. If wishes were horses, <laughs> Senator Tom Cotton, thanks so much, and congratulations on the Christmas baby that you thanks, announced. Uh, best wishes with that, Appreciate with a little it. boy coming your way.